Greetings Internet and welcome to Aaron Plays and I hope you're doing fantastically well. In this episode I'll be continuing Tarawa or D-Day at Tarawa by Decision Games. We're about to do turn five so this must be episode six. So I think I'm one episode ahead because the first episode we're setting up. Let's go down to the map and see what's going on. Okay, so the start of turn five, the last thing I did last turn is to turn one of these markers over, trying to remind myself that it needs to be done, because you can look at the turn track, a little white cube there. So the Japanese have now R and P actions, and if they come up on the card, I'll go through in detail. Also, I'd like to correct two errors. That one of... Uh, was made by a comment, well in fact I made two comments, by Michael DePaul7676, so if you're listening or watching, thank you, keeping me honest, don't want to win this, or even lose this, making a mistake, and I made the errors by these two little black cubes, so let's go through the first one, over here, these two units started in this hex, and I moved them two movement points to get closer to their buddies. Because um, they're a little bit out on the limb. However, as Michael said, if you move adjacent to an enemy unit, no matter what fire strengths are in here, you must stop. So they don't get to here, they only get to here. It's one hex, but a single hex in this game can make all the difference. So that's error one. Error two, and I keep making these little errors on this side. Over here, I move this unit from here to here, which requires an infiltration roll. Now, I mistakenly assumed, and you know what assumed means, um, that because I was engaging the Japanese unit in close combat here, that they didn't project fire zones out to these hexes and also I didn't have to worry about infiltration. No, nah, it doesn't say that in the rules anywhere. No, nah, that was me inventing it. So I have to do an infiltration check on you. I know we're way past past what's past. Way past that point, but I think it's not something that's going to be detrimental to anything else that's going around here. So I need to make that infiltration check. And that's drawn from the cards which are sitting over there. So I think to fail or to take a loss on infiltration check, it must be the colour, which is brown, and also the symbol. Okay, so we got away with it. All right, well, that does draw an extra card out of the deck. And that, that, that I believe, is it. So we're turn five. Obviously, I'm going to make some mistakes in this one. Michael, if you're watching, go for it. There are no reinforcements on or the US amphibious operations phase. Okay, there's nothing to bring on this turn. There's no units of mine wading ashore. Okay, um, and there's no surviving officers to move. However, turn six, I do get some reinforcements and I need to place those in the beach, beach approach boxes. And there's quite a lot of units coming in on Red Beach 2 and Red Beach 3. So let me put those out and then I can show you what's, what's incoming dudes. Okay, there they are, ready to go. These are the last reinforcements I get until turn 17, I guess on day two. So there are a few artillery units that enter on, on an event and I might get some heroes and such forth with a random event. But these are the last actual troops. I've got to place them in either of those three hexes that are marked. And yeah, I mean, I've got more. I mean, the stacking limit only applies at the end of the action phase. So hopefully I can be able to do something with these guys once they land because they're sort of overstacked. But hey ho, I mean, I'm not going to get all of them in via 
LVTs anyway, because I'm limited. So, but I can determine that what's going to be coming in via LVT and what's going to be wading in after the next turn. Well, in the beginning of the next turn. So that concludes the US amphibious phase, for amphibious operations phase. So we now go into the event phase. Okay, so I've moved the cards down from the box up there to near my hand where I don't have to stretch. So the event phase, I'm just drawing one card, looking at what the event is. And two to ten, take a naval fire marker. I'm getting a lot of support from the ships, which is good. That's what it should be doing. So I've now got two of those in stock. Okay, so that's the event marker, event phase completed. Where's my phase marker? Here it is. Okay, we are now into the Japanese fire phase. Okay, this is the fire card. So we've got orange M, no problem. But we've got blue R. Okay, so we have to take note of that blue, the, the R in the blue. And then we've got a double, double brown and diamond. So we've got to do the orange first. We work our way along the front, starting over this side. And let's zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Right. Has that got everything in? Yes. So we're looking at orange on the map. So this is blue, blue, red. We have an orange unit here. Okay, let's just remove these for the moment. So is any of my units in the fire zone of orange? This one is, it's steady and it's a circle. And I'm going to look at the card, it's a diamond, so he's okay. In this hex here, it's also a steady and we've got we have got a diamond there and yeah hero so yeah unfortunately that unit takes a step loss from the fire from this hex and because this hex is unrevealed it disrupts my guys that's not nice that means they won't be able to do anything. All the hex were disrupted anyway. So that's okay. You don't suffer double disruption. He says, hopefully. Don't remember a double disruption. Okay, so moving along the front. We have an orange here. It doesn't seem to be impacting anything. We have, I hope you guys can see, orange here now he's not in a fire zone of orange and neither's my tank so this guy's not doing anything moving further along okay orange here there's no one in it this is green that's okay brown so by the looks of it that's all we're concerned with from the orange part of the card Now we're doing the blue, and with blue, it depends on if it's, because it's got that R, it depends on the location. So we're looking at this unit here. He will now, he's in the coast. It says, um, coast with occupied US units in field of fire. Occupied, no units in field of fire, or unoccupied within two hexes of US unit. Now, it says resupply, place depth marker if none, or fire. I don't believe he can place a depth marker because he's out of communication, but let me just double check. I mean, that's the whole point of what I'm doing, so, but I'm gonna double check. Okay, this gives an overrun option for the tank. So it says fire if US units in field of fire. Remember, a tank has, it's normal printed fire plus one hex. 
So this tank unit will fire at this tank unit. But that is a diamond, sorry, that is a, a triangle. The f effect is a diamond. So it has no effect because it's, it's a steady fire rather than intense fire. So it's no effect. And then if the overrun, then if at least one use unit is hit, move into the hex. So it wasn't hit, so it doesn't move into the hex. But as I keep saying with this set of rules, I'm just gonna have to double check that. That seems to be correct. Okay, any other blue? Uh, no, but we move along here. And we have blue position here. Right, does he have communication? This unit grants him communication. So the answer is yes. It's a coastal. Resupply. Place depth marker if none. There is none, so he gets a depth marker. Okie dokie. Bit unfortunate again, but there we go. Yeah, this unit's put me in communication. This would be stopping. So unfortunately, some extra Japanese troops got down there. Darn it. Okay, moving along. All right, now this position, there's no US within two hexes, so has no effect. This position, well, he's going to get a depth marker as well. Uh, Japanese flooding to the front. I suppose it's only fair that I've got guys coming in. No US units, and yeah, the further we look. Yeah, that's, that's me light source. Um, yeah, there's going to be nothing here. It is coastal. Let's just double check that. Zone D, E, F only. Reinforce. That's the zone C. No. We don't need to check. D, E, and F. That's a coastal. Oh, I need to go back on something there. Okay, on this position here, uh, unoccupied in Japanese communication and within two, oh, uh, blue, it's with the wind two hexes, it stops it being reinforced. Okay, so that's the R. So you can see how those little letters that come out at the top there, and they're random. This one is a definite, that's an I, always is going to be an I, but these are random in the order they come out. So, yeah, reinforcements flooding to the front. Okay, and now we're going on to double brown, there's the card again with an A. We don't have to worry about the A, because the A action hasn't come out yet. But we do have to worry, oh, where's the focus gone? Yeah, oh, let's focus on the hand, focus on the board. Okay, so we're back. Sorry about the loss of focus there. Um, and the brown's got to be double. So we're looking here. There's only a single unit. There's no other brown down here. So we're okay there. Moving along. The brown here, single, so no effect. Brown single here, no effect. Brown at the top here, no effect. We're looking at here now. Now there's multiple browns here. Remember, it doesn't have to have depth, it could have just multiple units, so they will fire have i got did i move sufficiently out of range of them though i did uh, even though i only was yeah if i stayed where i was they would potentially taken a, a step loss in fact they would have taken a step loss so that was useful from what i did last time i know they didn't get as far as i needed them to or wanted them to thanks michael but yeah 
At least I don't get fired on. And that concludes the Japanese fire card. So looking back at the phase track. So we finish the phase. No event because these are from turn 10 onwards. We're into my turn. Woohoo! I can do something. Yay! Okay, so we're back. Sorry about the loss of focus there. Um, and the brown's got to be double. So we're looking here. There's only a single unit. There's no other brown down here. So we're okay there. Moving along. There's a brown here, single, so no effect. Brown single here, no effect. Brown the top here, no effect. We're looking at here now. Now there's multiple browns here. Remember, it doesn't have to have depth. It could have just multiple units. So they will fire. Have I got, did I move sufficiently out of range of them though? I did. Uh, Even though I only was, yeah, if I stayed where I was, they would potentially have taken a, a step loss. In fact, they would have taken a step loss. So that was useful from what I did last time. I know they didn't get as far as I needed them to or wanted them to. Thanks, Michael. But yeah, at least they don't get fired on. And that concludes the Japanese fire card. So looking back at the phase track. So we finish the phase. No event because these are from turn 10 onwards. We're into my turn. Woohoo! I can do something. Yay! It's slightly different in close combat. Japanese withdrawal. When a US attack defeats an elite Japanese unit, which this is on turns 1 to 16, which we are, the unit withdraws instead of being eliminated if it can trace Japanese communications at the moment of attack which it can't. So it's not withdrawn. So place defeat units not eligible to withdraw in the Japanese eliminated units on turns one to 16. And starting on turn 17, they will be removed from play. So he's placed in the eliminated box. Some of those eliminated units will come back. Uh, you know, a few stragglers here and there add up. So those two units are done. But I'm not allowed to advance after combat. Okay. So what's the best thing to do there? Do I advance into that hex? I know it's not going to get reinforced. Can my tanks get over this seawall? Cannot seem to see anything that stops. Therefore, do I want to bar if I barrage that unit, I can't attack it. I think I might want to attack that with this unit. So I'm going to move this tank one, two into there. Okay. Do we want to disrupt this unit? We can do it with the naval gunfire. Take away its depth and then start moving around it. If we're in here. Is that an intensive fire zone? It is, so we'd have to stop. If we move this unit, it'll have to stop there. Mm. Not sure, not sure what to do there. If I attack it, I'll just possibly remove its depth. Is he doubled, he's in a, there is a building in there. What does a building do? It's not fortified, it's just a normal building. Unit strength doubled, depth is not. So we might have everything we require. And it is a free attack. We've got engineers with flamethrowers. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so I'm declaring an attack on this unit. 
so currently I have six seven eight combat sprint and I'm attacking only the first unit gets revealed top unit okay and it's a good unit unfortunately it requires flanking and machine guns I've got the machine guns but I don't have flanking to have flanking I'd have to be the two units must be separated Okay, so what will that remain mean for that combat? So, US attackers possess required weapons. The answer is no. Is the attack strength at least double? Yes, because I have six, seven, eight to three. Japanese unit, an unrevealed depth marker. Japanese disrupted. Oh, so he's only disrupted. But at least we know what we need there now. We need flanking. We still don't know what the depth marker is. But So that's those two. Done. A Japanese unit must be in communication to receive a depth marker. He's not in communication because there's American units here and he can't get communication via a beach. And this unit has control anyway there. So he can't receive anything, so he will fire. He can't fire because he's disrupted, so the disruption is removed. Then, this unit here, he is in communication. Going back, now this is where I've got a nice little coloured chart. This is back, was on the back of the rule book. So you can follow what I'm doing. So he's a coastal, he's in a coast position. It's occupied. US units in field of fire. There's definitely US units in his field of fire. It says resupply. Place depth marker if none. And on turns one to seven or fire. If it was turns eleven plus it and fire. So he will receive a depth marker, which is taken from he's a coastal position, so they're taken from this pile here so these are all pre-shuffled so i'm placing a depth marker in that hex which is a bit unfortunate but there we go coastal depth flip that over and away he goes and i have no idea what that is okay so we're still looking for blue now we've got a blue here now that's an inland so again i look at the chart but now I'm looking at inland position, oh, see that way. inland position under the R, and it asked me a couple of questions. All right, US units in field of fire? No, it's too far away. Occupied, no, no, it's unoccupied in Japanese communication and within two hexes of a US unit. There's no unit within two hexes, so none of those apply. So therefore, nothing happens there. If there had been, a reserve would have been placed in that hex. Therefore, moving along the front, the next blue position is this tank. So what's he going to do under an R fire? Let's have a look. Yeah, I've done that right. It is possible for a US unit to become disrupted during the US action phase, which he was, as a result of the US attack on close combat. Such a disruption may not be removed from the unit in the action phase in which it was occurred, since it has already performed an action. And to aid, I should have placed that on the black disruption side of the counter, which then gets now flipped to the, the white, so he can remove that next turn. Okay. Um, and we go over now to the close combat situation. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Risky, but hey ho. Sometimes you've got to take a risk. So, the US unit will get four cards, the Japanese. Oh no, he's a tough little shit. Cool, where's those zeros? 
that I had on the first turn. Can't they come back? Can't they like use them again? <sighs> Obviously not. Got lucky on the first turn, but now it's biting me in the bum. Okay, close combat. So I'll get four cards. One, two, three, four. Let's just move these up a little bit. Give myself a bit of space. The Japanese unit, right. It's not attacking. He's got a total strength of greater than four. No. So he gets one to start with. Okay. He gets another one because he's got a close combat requirement on the counter. No, it's not night. He has no depth. So that's it. The Japanese fire first. So we flip that over and we're looking for green. Well, we're hoping it's not green. Okay. There's no green there, so that's no effect. There's also no close combat effect on that card. So that can go to the discard pile. Now my card, again, looking for green. We found green. Therefore... He is defeated. There's no close combat action on that. Just double checking that. So of all units on one side to remain. Okay, so score a hit. Okay. If the card shows close combat event, you do that. If the card shows the close combat position color, which is done, eliminate depth marker from Japanese participants and discard. If no death marker present, eliminate a Japanese unit. Whoop, whoop. Okay. So that card goes to the discard pile. All of these, which were unused, go back on top of the draw pile. That Japanese unit has got a way to withdraw. Even though I, uh, I came from, no, I didn't, I came from there. So he can withdraw to there and then out. So he is placed into the Japanese reserves. It's a withdrawal, actually. It's close combat. Slightly different. Let me double check that. Okay, I was correct. Slightly different. If you attack them and they have a way to withdraw, they go to the reserve. If you close combat them, it says place elite units eliminated in close combat in the eliminated units box. Remove all non-elite Japanese units eliminated in close combat from play. I suppose they're a lot more deadlier. So that unit I just placed in the reserve actually goes to the eliminated box. To come back potentially later. And my guy goes into that hex and becomes disrupted. Disrupted, disrupted, disrupted. Uh, on the white side, because I can remove it next turn. Okay, I think I'll just place him there. We, we, we're done. Oh, wait a minute, there's an artillery unit there. I occupy the hex so I can put an artillery destroyed marker in there. And it's got a little L next to it which removes one of the light batteries from play. Which is one of these yellow cubes. Let me just double check that part. I know. Yeah, I know I keep on saying I'm double checking. I say these rules are, they're fine, they work, but they do require a lot of concentration. Which is easy to make a mistake. Whoops. Um, so let's remove these US action tokens from the board. And uh, yeah, I now re re check the two piles of cards. 
there's still more in the deck than there is in the discard pile, so I don't shuffle. And anything else? Discard drawn cards, check for a shuffle. There is none, so that will go back to the amphibious phase. The time marker will now move on to turn six when we get some reinforcements, which I've already planned for. So that ends the turn. Let's go back up to the top. Well, the Japanese are starting to flood to the to the actual front there with that, that R card that came out. And yeah, I wasn't too happy with the that revealing um, in the center there of that very strong Japanese unit with defense of four. That wasn't good, but we're doing quite well in the Parrot's Peak. Um, that's the, towards the western side of the field there. We're clearing up a few positions uh, and we've got quite strong reinforcements coming in ready for next turn. Turn five done. That is one sixth of the way through the game. If we manage to get all 30 turns done. I'm loving it. And I hope you guys are enjoying watching me struggle here at Tarawa. And I hope that it's, uh, I know I keep doing a lot of double checkings of the rules and yeah, I don't want to make mistakes or as many mistakes as I, as I have been doing. They're all, no play is going to be perfect. Um, but I want to make it as close as possible. Anyway, if you got this game, get it to the table. It's well worth it. Um, as I say, I've done Omaha before. I'm going to be redoing that after this one. Um, maybe not straight after. Might be a couple of months gap or whatever. But uh, I've got to finish this one first. But yeah, I do like the, the general nature of the design, the decisions I've got to make. They're all, it, it, it's definitely scratching the itch in here. If you've got it, play it, have fun. And that's what it's all about, playing games and having fun. So until next time, bye internet.